Well, thank you for the kind introduction, and we are very pleased uh, to inform you a bit on Benio's view on the plant-based um, nutrition today. Well, plant-based is um, going from a kind of trend, let's say, uh, to more revolution, and now it's really becoming mainstream. So many of the consumers are considering uh, to introduce plant-based foods and drinks into their uh, dairy or dietary um, habits, let's say. It also go, goes a little bit beyond even foods and drinks. It's just uh, part of their normal uh, shopping behavior, I would say, those, those plant-based um, behavior. If we look at uh, two main categories within the plant-based foods and drinks, we see that plant-based meat and fish uh, in Europe has a kind of already very nice market size. If we look at the growth figures, forecasted for the next five years, we see that there is an estimated growth of 6%. Compared to dairy, plant-based dairy, we see that that growth is rather limited because for dairy, the growth or the estimated growth is almost 10%. Uh, that, that's at least the forecast for the next five years. If you look at the new product launches in the last four to five years, we saw that in the food and beverage industry, around 11% uh, of those food and beverage uh, product launches did contain a vegetarian claim. So it's a rather modest growth as you, if you compare to, for example, four to five years ago. The claim vegan has been has become more and more popular because there we saw a tremendous growth from 7% uh, to almost 12% uh, of the food and beverages containing um, a vegan claim. Plant-based is a rather new claim um, and therefore we saw only a limited amount of claims uh, on the food and beverages a couple of years ago, but now it's becoming more and more uh, important. And it's exactly that plant-based claim basically that is needed to attract the flexitarian consumer. Um, and one out of four uh, people in the world do consider themselves as a flexitarian. So flexitarian meaning I eat plant-based very often, though I do not uh wants to go fully plant-based so i still eat some fish meat uh or dairy for example those consumers uh, are very often also interested in hybrid products so four out of ten eu consumers do uh do consider themselves as being interested in combining both animal-based proteins as well as plant-based um, proteins so basically they want to reduce their meat introduction to reduce their animal-based production um, based uh, animal-based products inside but uh, still want to have some uh, some plant-based if we then look at the motivators and the barriers uh, of consumers consuming plant-based dairy we see that in general it's mainly about the health and the fact that they consider plant-based dairy products as being very natural as well as supports their uh, balanced diet. Asking them about their health and nutritional um, drivers for consuming plant-based dairy, we see that it's mainly because it's lower in fat and it's easier to digest. Also, the plant-based proteins are seen as a little bit more healthy than the animal-derived um, proteins. What is holding them back from uh, eating plant-based dairy? It's the fact that it's still too expensive. Also, the fact that it's uh, taste-wise, it has to be improved sometimes, is holding them back, as well as the fact that it sounds sometimes uh, a little bit too processed and not natural enough. And now up to my colleague, uh, Olivier, who will introduce you in the motivators and the barriers in meat alternatives. Thank you, Benoit. And for the meat substitute product, the general motivator are animal welfare, better for animal welfare for 45%, that uh, it is healthy and helps to take good care of my body. 40% uh, of the consumer thinks that, and of course that it is uh, better for the planet, so the sustainability. The health and nutrition related motivator are also the fat content, it's low, lower in fat and lower in calorie but also that it contain more nutrients like fibers, minerals, and uh, vitamins. What are the hurdles uh, for consumer to, to, to uh, buy a meat substitute product? Um, the price, and uh, those products are still considered uh, too expensive for 38% of the consumer. That the products are too processed, not uh, natural enough and that uh, they taste uh, dry, not uh, juicy uh, enough. 
Therefore, I would say that for mid, uh, mid substitute, the way for, forward is to develop a product uh, with a short list of ingredients and, of course, um, a great taste uh, and textured uh, product. Let's have a look of the most convincing claims for a, a flexitarian, both for meat substitute application and dairy substitute application. And many of them are quite uh, similar, are the same, like a natural ingredient, uh, additive free, low environmental impact, high in plant-based protein, plant-based, no animal ingredients, high in fiber. Some of them are, are more typical for meat substitute, like low in fat, low in salt, meat free, and other more um, typical for dairy alternative, like easy to digest, low in sugar, for example. Seventy-five percent of the European consumer find that it is important to uh, know how made is food and what the food contain. And since the pandemic, 57% uh, of the European consumer pay more attention to the ingredient list. Therefore, it's good to know that for uh, the European consumer, um, wheat protein is a familiar uh, product, a familiar ingredient. 62% of them are uh, recognized that can even go to 70% in, in France, 68 in, in Spain. And 63% of them uh, consider wheat as a very appealing source uh, for making plant-based meat and fish uh, substitute. Rice protein is also a familiar uh, protein source. 69% of the uh, European consumer say that uh, rice protein is familiar, even 76%. 77% in France and 75% in uh, Spain and Poland. 67% of them consider rice as a very appealing source for a plant-based dairy. And now, Benoit, uh, let us know about the challenges uh, in the dairy substitute uh, sector. Thank you, Olivier. Um, so while yeah, I've listed here uh, four main challenges in uh, dairy alternatives that should be overcome, uh, one of them is the pleasant flavor profile, so that comes back a little bit to what we have seen as a barrier uh, in plant-based dairy alternatives. Also the clean label ingredients, so the naturality uh, of the product. Next to that, we also have the good texture and body, as well as the smooth and creamy mouthfeel to have a dairy-like uh, texture, so to say. And it's those latter two uh, elements, so the good texture and body and smooth and creamy mouthfeel, at those um, two elements, rice ingredients can be of help. Um, so rice ingredients can help in creating that smooth and creamy uh, dairy alternative. Thanks to basically uh, the very small starch granules um, and also the molecular structure of uh, rice starch. So the granules of rice uh, or starch granules of rice are way smaller compared to other botanical sources like for example corn, tapioca or um, potato. Next to that, rice is also known as uh, being hypoallergenic. So again, a very good source uh, to be used in dairy alternatives. And then um, the, la the last part is the fact that rice and rice starch in particular has a very neutral taste, has a neutral color. So there is no need to overcompensate with potential flavorings or uh, colorants. So basically there we see again that rice ingredients, so rice flour and rice starches are the best or a very good fit for uh, a wide range of dairy alternatives going from uh, fermented desserts, desserts, uh, frozen desserts, as well as plant-based drinks. One category which is maybe a little bit less uh, developed yet um, in the dairy alternative uh, segment is the cheese. So if we look at dairy products, we see that both milk and uh, cheese do have the same uh, value more or less. If we look at dairy alternative, alternatives, we do see that dairy alternative milks are way, uh, or the size of, uh, or the, the, the market size of dairy alternative drinks is way bigger than the cheese, uh, dairy alternative cheese. So definitely something to uh, to work on. Also something that we worked on at Benio, and that's, uh, we developed several recipes for uh, plant-based uh, cream cheeses, as well as 
plant-based desserts uh, containing uh, alternatives for cheese. One of them is basically the vegan cheesecake. Uh, we developed a very nice and tasty recipe um, for a vegan cheesecake. So a uh, cake with crumb and then uh, the cheesecake itself does contain uh, three peño ingredients, basically. One is uh, the ORFT inulin, which enhances the short texture and also will improve the creamy mouthfeel. Next to that, uh, we also included rice flour as well as rice starches to ensure a smooth and pleasant mouthfeel and a very set um, texture. So you can see an ideal fit for this uh, very nice and tasty uh, vegan uh, cheesecake. And now up to Olivier to enlighten us on uh, everything which has been developed in the meat alternative uh, segment. And the challenges in the meat substitute uh, segment uh, to develop a great meat substitute product. First of all, I want to, to speak about the texture and taste. Great taste and texture are uh, very, very important to uh, have successful uh, product. On top of that, the product has to be to have a pleasant mouthfeel, meaning a juicy mouthfeel. And last but not least, that they are also easy to prepare. Let me mention the benefit of using textured wheat protein uh, for creating great tasting meat uh, substitute. But first of all, uh, already mentioned that uh, wheat protein uh, have a good uh, perception by customer being a well-known and local crop uh, with a natural and healthy image. It's a good source of protein rich in many amino acids. Uh, the taste is neutral, so textured wheat protein have the reputation uh, of uh, being the most uh, neutral uh, taste uh, protein in, in the market. Also, they can achieve a, a good meat-like uh, texture, chewable texture. They are user-friendly, meaning that the hydration is fast, they are stable to freezing and towing, and they are suitable in a wide range of applications. Last and, uh, and not least, they are affordable. The range of application, it go from uh, beef imitation, uh, burgers, patties, uh, chicken imitation, mainly nuggets, but also strip and fillet, fish imitation, um, like uh, stick, fish sticks and, and fingers, tuna imitation, uh, sausages, frankfurt types, uh, white pudding types, country style, merguez, and ready meals, lasagne, chili sin carne, uh, stir fried or shepherd pies, to cite a few. What are the next steps I would say uh, in this market? Uh, first of all, uh, let's uh, speak about the food service uh, sector. So many food service restaurants already have a plant-based product on their uh, menu, but some of them even dedicate um, plant-based restaurant. The local and regional sourcing is gaining importance also with product fitting daily routine and meeting and convenience. Meat hybrid is also a, a product which uh, could attract in the future more consumer in the category. And finally, plant-based food. Uh, expand the choice of plant-based food beyond the sticks and uh, fingers. Example of recipe, first one being vegan merguez yeah, using textured wheat protein at 32%. Of course, the hydration water, some oil uh, for the, the juiciness and then um, minor ingredients like the merguez spices, um, methyl cellulose and salt. Uh, this uh, recipe provides a meat-like texture, a juicy mouthfeel, a nice nice taste and the claim high in protein is possible depending on the local regulation. Another recipe is the vegetarian chicken fillet, again with textured protein, oil and also a pre-cooked high starch to increase the viscosity of the dough. Other ingredients being egg white powder, chicken flavor and salt. The benefit of the recipe is the tenderness, the juiciness, the taste, the white color. It's a clean label recipe and a recipe high in protein. Let's conclude. And we can say that plant-based food is more than a trend. It's an ongoing social development in the population. 
It is a high growing market segment boosted by flexitarian consumers. The main drivers are health, animal welfare, sustainability and naturality. Rice-based ingredients offer plenty of solutions for their substitute application and textured wheat protein is a well-known source of protein showing many benefits for the development of meat substitute products. Thank you for your attention and uh, back to you, Oliver, for some questions. Thank you very much, Olivier and Benoit. Um, quick question. So um, what new proteins are in the pipeline? Uh, you've talked about rice and wheat. Um, yeah, which, which new ones are in the pipeline and which of these are well perceived by the consumer, perhaps not so well perceived by the consumer and, and how will these help overcome the, some of the barriers in this market that, you, that you've identified? Who, who, who wants to go first? Leave it up to Olivier to, uh, to answer. <laughs> um, but you know that um, pulse protein are becoming more and more, uh, more and more uh, popular. So we see uh, this range of uh, protein, uh, bee protein already present on the market since uh, a few years, but also lentils and faba bean protein uh, as uh, being uh, also protein uh, for the future, uh, being also non non allergenic and 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 so uh, meeting a customer a customer uh, request. Yes. And uh, one of the challenges for plant-based proteins is to match the nutritional profile, so the uh, amino acid profile of animal-based proteins, for example. What, tell me more about what solutions do you see here? Well, let me take uh, that one. Um, yeah, that, that's that's true. That's one of the, the challenges, let's say. Um, I think one of the, the potential solutions there is combining plant-based proteins. If you look, for example, at uh, rice protein, which is well perceived by consumers, uh, as we saw in, in Olivier's his slide, we see that it, the amino acid profile as such is quite complete. However, some deficits uh, for lysine. If you look then, for example, at pea protein, on the other hand, we see that um, pea protein is high in lysine, but has some other deficits. And from our own uh, research, let's say, we saw that combining both proteins, uh, both plant-based proteins, so rice and pea, might uh, lead to a complete protein, a complete uh, plant-based protein, which is then matching the needs of a uh, of an adult, for example. And how how would consumers find that mix of proteins? Would they would they do they do they do they care? I think uh, if you. Uh, communicate uh, in a good way to that that you combine those proteins to enhance the nutritional profile and also knowing that both rice and pea are well perceived i think the consumer are uh, definitely open for that what about one of the other barriers you identified namely cost how how do how do you see that being overcome <laughs> I think that um, uh, cost for the time being is also the higher cost is also because uh, the company have to also amortize the R&D the R&D uh, work which was done uh, to develop the product um, also using new ingredients which are maybe more expensive but um, that will be let's see you know in the future uh, probably that the cost will will go down also with the increasing uh, increasing competition what about um, sustainability? How is it? How important is it that the that plant-based products are, are perceived as, as sustainable? And how how are you producing your products in a in a sustainable way? Yeah, but sustainability is uh, becoming very very important. It's really something that uh, we are asked now almost every time we contact a customer. Uh, so. Um, and, and, and Beneo is really uh, also, I've put that also in the center of their development. Um, for the, the protein and the texture wheat proteins, for example, uh, we do use uh, wheat coming from France, uh, Belgium, and, and Germany only, and, uh, and the protein are produced uh, in Belgium, uh, then um, guaranteeing the, the sustainability and the local sourcing of, of the product. And what about in the the, 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 the plant-based dairy space and Benoit? Well, yeah, I think yeah, sustainability is something that uh, is of importance in, in 
in the last couple of years and will become more and more important. So it uh, will be in the DNA of uh, each of the companies um, producing uh, plant-based uh, dairy dairy products. Uh, and it's again also a matter of communicating. I think uh, putting some labels on 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 pack and also we see from several um, retailers, let's say that they want to communicate on a kind of eco score. So we see that our customers and the consumer are asking for more uh, transparency. And I think uh, we should all work on that uh, in terms of sustainability. Yes. Where are you, so where are you sourcing the, your rice protein from? Well, yeah, we are using uh, rice and, and we are sourcing obviously from uh, several regions in the world, uh, depending on the variety, rice variety that we need. Um, so it's, it's quite diverse. Uh, and obviously you can source rice only from uh, regions where it can, can grow. Uh, but again, there, um, I think, yeah, the sustainability aspect is, is definitely uh, something that we keep in mind and we keep uh, on working on uh, to improve that. Uh, without forgetting, of course, how, how rice is grown and cultivated uh, in certain areas. Okay. And, and, and going back to the, the plant-based meat space, what um, what kind of formulations can the, the industry expect to be look, look, looking forward to? Because we, we, we've seen, we've seen uh, the burgers, the, the, the meatballs, the, the patty. The, uh, um, this is, these products are fairly... You, 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 ubiquitous what do what do end consumers want do they want these products but with a an improved taste and nutritional profile or, or do they want completely new things altogether i would say both uh, of course as i mentioned uh, taste and texture is a primordial huh, uh, for meat substitute product to be successful on the market so great tasting uh, i think that also um, of course no it's more the, the, the vegan uh, claim which is used, so a vegan formulation, and uh, if possible, a clean label formulation, uh, which is not easy for, with the vegan claim. Um, and then a short list of ingredients is also important um, for, for the consumer. But the, um, the offer needs to also to be extended. Huh? If uh, burgers, meatballs, uh, nuggets are still very popular, um, I think that the flexitarian, uh, they are looking for other products like whole muscle, huh? uh, chicken fillet, or even uh, things like a steak, beef steak, uh, or, and also cold cuts, for example. Um, that is very useful, very interesting. I think that's going to... Um lead on to a very fruitful panel discussion next so let's go straight into our into that panel discussion uh, the title is called B uh, beyond soy and pea emerging ingredients and technologies to unlock plant-based nutrition so let's get let's get straight into that thank you thank you olivia and benoit again <laughs> 